do a couple quick questions first. Just in case, because we know that, the, can you hear me okay, Shauna? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, <laughs> all right, good deal. Um, I do have a couple quick questions for you. Um, somebody oh. was asking about growing a cutting garden. Can you do that in the, the yeah. raised bed? Yes, zinnias, my friends, zinnias. Oh my goodness. I have had the most success with zinnias because you can grow the zinnia, right? You're growing it, then you cut it, and then it comes back. It is a plant that cuts and come again, you know, cut and come again. You can absolutely do a, a cutting garden. And in fact, I would encourage you to use cut and come again type of plants um, because then you're getting way more bang for your buck and that, you know, six foot wide space or wherever you might have elevated beds, then if you would plant bulbs like a gladiolus only blooms once in a season. And so then you're going to cut it and then it's done. So cut and come again. Absolutely. And then somebody asked about doing, can you do a, like a living wall with herbs inside? You can. Here's the issue about herbs inside. Um, I don't have inside living wall gardens because I'm too lazy to build a construction that would block water from the wall. Now, what I have done, and if you go to my website and look, I do have examples of growing vegetables inside. And in fact, if you want, I can send you some links on that that you might share with them. But it, I was growing microgreens and full-size vegetables inside, but I wasn't attaching it to the wall. I was using a standalone unit. And so I would be cautious about attaching things to the wall. It is possible. And when you go to all these fancy pants, you go to Pinterest, you see all these plants on the wall all the time. Who the heck's watering that? How do you <laughs> climb up eight, eight feet to get to that sucker, you know? I want to know because I can't do that. And I think it's unreasonable. So, yes, you can. Another question is how much do you have to worry about uh, fertilizing the, the elevated beds? Oh, I just, I fertilize just like I do with any other plant. Um, and you all are going to laugh at me because I don't really fertilize much. Um, when I plant the plants, be they vegetables or whatever, I use my handy dandy measuring tool, which is my hand. <laughs> and I take, you know, like a quarter cup of organic fertilizer. I throw it in the planting hole and then I plant the plant. I don't fertilize it again unless something's wrong. You know, like the plant's like leaning, it's weak. It's has some bugs attack it because people always ask me, and by the way, I'm not a bug, bug expert. We know Jessica is the person for that, but <laughs> I, I completely, uh, if a plant is being attacked by bugs, I first look at what's happening with the roots. It's the soil, it's the water, something's going on with the roots. And so, uh, you know, being able to, uh, I sometimes will fertilize it, boost it up. But ultimately, if it's a pain in my neck, I compost it. I don't even mess with it anymore. But yes, so organic fertilizer is all I use. Um, there is an exception to that. I have the, I have some containers out front that are cactus. And they are never going to be in another pot. There will never be food produced from them. I'm not going to be growing food in any way. And they are difficult to fertilize because they're filled with cactus. So they're all prickly and everything. So I add the long-term extended release fertilizer that is not organic. Um, but I, I, and yes, cactus do need, you know, lots of people say, oh, a cactus never needs fertilizing. That's not true if you have it in a pot because it has no way to get its natural nutrients from from anything else so if it's in a container it does need so there's my answer and then how much soil do you need what is the minimum depth that you can it have depends there? on the plants right so we saw if it, you put them in those uh you put it in the drains that go along what is that called the drains that go along the side of your house like a gutter gutter thank you <laughs> couldn't remember that word um if you plant in a gutter um you're gonna have tiny rooted things like it has to be lettuce right? Or some green. It, it doesn't do very well. It's only a few inches deep. On average, though, your average plant 12 inches deep is about right for almost everything, unless you're using a special planting technique, like with a tomato. And then you need to go deeper. 
right? And which is why I encourage the veg trug thing because it has that deep center. And I plant it really as deep as I can, or I lay the, the tomato down on its side and plant it. You know, I do all kinds of different techniques, but they're focused on roots. What are the roots of those plants going to be? And uh, I made a few mistakes here too. Killed a lot of plants, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm a murderer without a doubt. I mean, because Arizona weather is not the same as it is in Illinois. And I thought I killed a lot of plants in Illinois. It was nothing compared to the first year that I lived here. Uh, I killed everything. And the reason being, I didn't understand the the sun heat ratio. Here, um, if you're just in regular heat, it's not a problem with shade. But once you get in full sun, it's like you're literally cooking something in an oven. And so that requires the roots to be cooler, uh, more water, you know, so it depends on your location, where you're planting that plant to. For example, if you're planting on the south side of an old garage and it's going to be full sun, extreme heat all summer, then you know that having a little more soil means it, you also have a little more moisture, which would be important. So again, it depends on the plant. And then I have a question about setting up like an aromatherapy garden in an oh, elevated bed. Oh, if you yes, had any yes, plant yes. suggestions. I do. Hold on. Don't leave. I've got, and this, I know it's reversed in your image here. And the wellness garden, I have a whole chapter on aromatherapy plants. And the, it, I wouldn't even call it aromatherapy, but when you're building a therapeutic garden, you have a choice to do things that are really smell powerful or really not smell powerful. If, for example, you have someone that you want, that the garden is for someone who has cancer. Lots of people who have cancer and go through all the chemotherapy have extreme scent sensitivity. So putting lighter scents in is actually more therapeutic than putting in strong scents like lavender, right? So Using your common sense and making a plan for that scent garden is really important. And so you know what, now for somebody who has Alzheimer's, a rose garden is a lovely idea because it's been proven that memories from your childhood can stimulate more brain activity. And so a, imagine a sweet older woman sitting in her rose garden, smelling her childhood, right? This is very therapeutic and very encourages mental uh, mental expanse, if you will. And then of course, kids love smelly, smelly things. So if you were building a therapeutic garden for a kid, finding a stinky plant would be the funnest, right? The kids like all kinds of smells. So yes, you can absolutely plant a scented or scent based garden in your elevated beds. I encourage you to do this and just think about what therapy you're really going for first in order to pick the best plants for that person. And then I had another question about the soil in your containers. Do you have to place that every year i know you talked about layering but eventually you're I, do la I still layer i layer because what happens in in the big containers now in pots in pots i dump pots i put the you know annually not every single pot but you know um uh, for uh, if it's an herb garden or something like that or i made the mistake never grow mint i'll never grow mint ever again i i grew it in illinois no problem i grow it here and like the roots take over the soil it's insane i've never seen anything like it, it was really really dumb <laughs> but um i would dump soil if in the compost bin for smaller containers and then replace it annually so especially with a living wall but in those large containers after it gets watered, you know, when I first planted, I, do I have a measuring? I do have a measuring stick here. Let's say I leave in those big containers about three inches at the top. So I don't fill the container all the way up to the edge like this. I left, I leave more. Then what happens as time goes on is the soil starts to sink a little bit because it compacts, right? As you water it and all that, it'll start to compact down a little bit. Well, then the next season I come in with a couple bags of something like rotted manure and I refresh the soil. I don't have to do a lot of digging or anything like that. I just lay the new layer on top 
And if I'm going to replace plants, great, because, you know, plants sometimes need to be replaced. Um, but otherwise, I leave it be and see what happens. Um, the only time it's ever been a problem, like I said, is when I had a plant that was like mint, where the roots invaded so heavily that it, I mean, I basically had to empty out the entire bin, you know, because it, even though it was giant, I'm like, what a mistake. And, and by the way, do not compost mint stems. <laughs> Learned that the hard way too. You'll have mint everywhere. Uh, just mint. Oh my goodness. So don't do that. But uh, absolutely uh, add more soil over the years. And um, when you're talking, what I did in the winter time with my elevated beds, because I don't have to worry about that anymore here. I don't have uh, a snowy winter. Um, but in Illinois, what I did was I'd cover, I'd, I'd empty out the container of plants and then I would cover it over winter. I would then at the end of the season, lift up the cover add my layer of manure or compost and then plant with fertilizer. And uh, of note, if your potting soil says it has fertilizer included, organic or other, and you, it only lasts three months. That, that's only gonna be one season. So you must add new organic fertilizer to your containers in the future, or the plants aren't gonna be as successful. And then I had a question too, the, the veg trugs, do those have drainage built into them? They're just, because they're cedar and they're not sealed together, you just rest the wood on top of one another. So it drips through the bottom. And at first, this was a pain. I'm like, ah, water's dripping everywhere. You know, oh my God. And now it is a benefit because what I do is I put all my babies under there. If I'm starting plants, you know how you uh, let a, a plant, a seedling get used to its environment. You take it out. And, well, if you set it in full sun down here, it's going to fry like a crisp. So I pop everything underneath the veg trucks. And so I get a new plant from the, the garden nursery and I'm like, oh, I'm not ready to plant it yet. I pop it underneath the veg trucks. So they're incredibly convenient. And I've also, I even, I've planted ferns under there <clears throat> right now. So if, you know, there's water that drips down, it's actually feeding a plant. Under so you could easily plant all kinds of things under there and then have a double level sort of thing. Um, but I would encourage you not to plant things that you have to get down there on your hands and knees and mess with a lot, right? Just because that <laughs> defeats the purpose. Instead, plant something that doesn't need a lot of care, ground cover or something like that. And it will be watered by the veg truck. And this is going to be our last question before going outside. Okay. Um, can you grow perennials in the elevated beds? And if so, how do you overwinter them? Okay. Yes, you can. Like I can without any problem because of where I live. But if you're in Illinois, uh, what I found was if there were planted in the center of a veg truck where they had depth, they were more likely to survive. If not, and this is what I did, I would lift the perennials that were in the veg truck, I would dig a hole in the fall, and I would plant them in the ground in the fall. And then, you know, when I started to close everything up for winter. And then in the spring, I'd dig them back out again and put them right back into the veg truck. And so that's the way, by the way, you should do with container gardens too. You know, I mean, some people bury their whole container garden. You know, they'll just like plop it in the ground. And I'm like, oh, my God. And, um, you know, there's still always a risk. You know, if you have a minus, minus 50 degree winter, which you, you've been having, I mean, there's still a risk it won't survive. But there's a risk it wouldn't survive even planted normally. You know, so that's you can do this. And um, I did it for years. So if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Sounds great. Do you want to? Show us your garden tour real quick. Yeah. Yes, I'm so excited. Okay, now let's see. How do I do this exactly? I start video from my cell phone. Yep, and then we have you on your cell phone, so you can go ahead and, and okay. um, take us off uh, screen sharing and turn off your video for your other one. Okay. So you can, you can see me now? I can see yeah. you now. So turn off the, the computer... Oh, how do I current stop video on that one? Oh, yep. there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yay, yay. Okay, we're going to go. I'm, now, 
we already found out the last time we did this that it, it's a little jerky when I'm walking, so I apologize. But before we get outside, I want to show you my indoor house plants. That's one of my paintings. That's my indoor house plants. So I do have outside plants and I have inside plants. Oops. So when it is oh. Oh. Hold on, Shauna. We're going to get you to start your video again. I'm trying to push the wrong one to get your video stopped. All right, okay. you're good. <laughs> okay, you tell me about this. All right, we can't hear you very well. Can you uh, talk closer to your phone? Your audio? Yeah, we, we hear you, it's just you're far away. Okay, now can you hear me? Not, yeah, I think you just need to be closer to your phone. I am. It shows that she's muted. Here, try unmuting uh, your phone. You, you're muted on your phone. All right, now there, try. That... Yep. All right, now we should be good. Okay, yay! <laughs> okay, say I have to. Oh, no, no, we're going to go this way first. Oh, the sun, the sun is here. So behind me is my pool. And what I showed you in those photos before which is my pergola, heavy duty pergola back here. But I'm walking around to the side yard. Sorry if it's jerky, because I want to show you this garden here. So this is a square foot garden. And the reason I wanted to show it to you is because it has a different soil mix. It has one third it has Mel's mix. So here, I'm going to get in the shade so I can see you. Mel's mix is one third peat moss or coconut core. I do not use peat moss in the garden. I want you to know. I only use coconut core um, because peat moss, peat is a endangered thing. So I don't want to use that. So we have the peat moss or excuse me, the coconut core we have one third compost and then one third vermiculite. Okay. So that is different than what these other containers over here have. These containers have that one third potting soil, one third compost and one third rotted manure combination I was telling you about. So you can see that both of them grow fine and there's plenty of plants in there. They're all babies right now. They're little. I'm trying to get the camera right for you. There we go. You can see it. And I will show you, like if I grab a handful of it, what people are like, well, that's not really soil. But if I, here, I'll stand in the, the shade. So you can, can you see it? No. Let's stand in the sun then. Okay, fine. If I grab this, I'm trying to get the camera just so. And uh, this way. Aha! There we go. We got it. You can see that it just looks like regular soil, but it's the vermiculite compost mix. And it's really wonderful. I mean, just terrific. And I've also put living walls over on this side. I didn't really show you in the pictures before. But to show you up close, let's see if I can. I'm not sure if I can show you. You can see that there's a tube that connects down here, down below, and it runs to my irrigation line. By the way, this smells delicious. It's time. Woo! Smelling good. And what I do with this living wall is I cut holes in the top, and then I just cut the holes, and then I plant the plants right in there, and they stay there, and they're quite successful all the time. And then here's the rest of the outdoor garden. So on this side, you see the shade is really hitting me over here on this other side, but it is about, uh, I want to say eight foot wide. So this is the wider one and why I planted the veg trucks because I do have more space and a veg truck, you can see on the end here, is four feet wide, no, three feet wide and six feet long. So it's significantly uh, lengthy and takes up a lot of space. And in others, in another area here, I'm going to show you 
I have a giant elevated bed right here. It is, it looks like a big pot, but it is just a, it's the same, it's three feet high. So you can plant all kinds of things in regular pots that are just large as well. And I'm seeing if there's anything back there behind me. No, nope, that's it. Let's go and I'll do a quick, quick peek over in my side yard. And yes, we still have lemons on the lemon tree, and it, which is kind of a miracle because by now they're usually all falling off. And I'm standing underneath the lemon tree here. Hold on. See if, it's so hard to do this. Oh, there we go. Nope, wrong way. There we go. And these are the lemons from my lemon tree. They make me so happy. <laughs> Do. I love having a lemon tree and being able to just pick a lemon fresh off. Uh, it is fantastic and um, great cocktail making, just saying. All right, let's come over here. And then here is my other side yard I was telling you about. And what I've done is I painted that yellow wall and I have a cutoff. I have a cutoff right here and then the purple starts. And so let's see if I stand up here. I'll show you real quick. Whoa! See if you can see. There it is. There's the whole living wall all the way down of all kinds of elevated bed garden. And this is just so we get we'll walk all the way down here. So you can see it is right here. So it's hip height. It's just about that height, any lower, and I wouldn't be able to garden with it. And so I built these for just in time for you so that you'd have, you'd be able to see it. All right. So that's a very quick tour of my outdoor gardens. And now I'm going to go back in. Uh oh, with my lemon. <laughs> <I just did. laughs> and then we can we can close up. Sure. Thank you for being patient and walking with me because. Hold on, now I have yeah. to push mooch on this. I think. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Okay. How do I, how do I, how do I, oh, we got to mute the, the phone and then switch to the, the computer or vice versa, one or, one or the other. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think we lost you, Shauna. Are you there, Shauna? I'm here. All right. <laughs> we don't have your video anymore, but um, I did have a couple quick questions about um, your your garden. Are those okay. uh, metal containers, are those completely filled with soil or do you have a filler in the bottom? Those metal containers are completely filled with soil. And I can, hold on one second, if I share screen real quick again. Share. There we go. I can go back and I can show you. Hold on. There they are. And so you can see that they're completely filled with soil, almost like, again, only a, up to a few inches from the top. And they, those, I actually put uh, some soil at the, or soil, I put some boxes and things at the very, very bottom of them. And so I filled those a little taller than I normally would because I know that they're going to sink. It's going to sink a bit. And uh, but that side yard garden, especially in the early morning when I, I don't have that extreme sun happening, um, it is cool and beautiful and wonderful. The living walls are really tropical plants. They're like um, the ferns and the sweet potato vines and that sort of thing. And when that gets really full, it just is a wall of plants and color. So in just a few months, this will be incredible to go out there and really sit and enjoy. 
And then one more question. Uh, what's the difference between growing in a, a veg truck versus the metal elevated containers that you just showed us? Yeah, the birdies raised beds don't have a space underneath. And the veg truck does have a space underneath. So I'd say most significantly, it's that there is no space underneath it. And the other thing is, is that the advantage to birdies is that you don't have to keep it in this eight foot by two foot, con two foot configuration. You could make it four foot by four foot or six foot by three foot. I mean, there's different configurations that you can build and you have to build it yourself. And I will tell you, um, it's easier to put together a veg truck than it is to put together a birdies raised metal bed. And the reason why is there are 130 bolts that went into each one of these beds. And so I had to bolt each one and I didn't have a helper. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, not another bolt. Ah, you know, boy, screwing them in. And he was like, oh my God. They give you this tiny little tool to assemble it. No, thank you. I got a drill and, you know, zipped them all in the best that I could. But it, so the assembly part was a little more challenging with birdies. But I mean, look at how cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Know? I love it so much. It's so adorable. And it's like, what do you do with a narrow side yard where you only have a few feet? Most people just toss some crap over there and store things and they don't really <laughs> use it at all. And I wanted it to be a secret garden theme. So if any of you ever come to my house, um, you can know that there's a secret garden that you can come and visit. And I also love the idea of having a meditation garden. I spent years trying to meditate. I am a super type A person, as you know, and I just could not calm myself down to meditate. I'm like, this is just ridiculous. And then one day I got it. And so I, I've noticed that um, just sitting quietly with my thoughts once in a while is enough for me to really get a benefit. Um, some people do this by praying and other people, you know, it's just a quiet moment. And why not have a quiet moment in a really beautiful place? Mm -hmm. And that's where I, that's why I decided to build this. It is very beautiful. Oh, thank you so much for, for sharing everything with us today. We really enjoyed your presentation.